welcome as we gather on this, the sixth Sunday of Epiphany, to celebrate the glorious news of the Word made flesh. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. As we come before our Lord, we open our hearts and pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires know, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Pray the calling for this, the sixth Sunday after Epiphany. Almighty and ever living God, whose Son Jesus Christ healed the sick and restored them to wholeness of life, look with compassion on the anguish of the world, and by your power make whole all peoples and nations through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Prepare our hearts for the proclamation of God's word. A reading from Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when light and relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness, in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream, that shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall not stay green when the year of drought is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious about all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways or according to the fruit of their doings. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Our appointed song this day is Psalm 1. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like the chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, the way of the wicked is doomed. Let us pray. Giver of life, save us from the desert of faithlessness, and nourish us with the living water of your word, that we may bring forth fruit that will last. In the name, name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead. If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God, because we testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. 
For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has been, if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those who also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you and revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. And for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, as we gather this day to celebrate your presence in our lives, may your Holy Spirit open our hearts that we would see you and know. Come, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. So today's gospel reading is what is commonly known from Matthew's perspective as the Sermon on the Mount, but today we heard Luke's account of that sermon. There's some debate as to whether it was actually the same sermon that was given by Jesus, perhaps on a bit of a flat plain on the side of the mountain, so Matthew refers to it as the Sermon on the Mount and Luke as the Sermon on the Plain, or if it's Jesus giving the same sermon on two different occasions. Some things are worth repeating. In any event, Luke reports a sermon slightly different than Matthew does. Different reporting doesn't mean quote, fake news. It means the reality of what was heard and witnessed and resonated differently with different people. We can read or hear the same passage of scripture on different occasions and experience it quite differently. It depends on our need and what is going on in our life at the time. Luke reports that Jesus came down and stood on a level place and a great crowd of his, with a great crowd of his disciples. Jesus had more than 12 disciples. 12 does not constitute a great crowd unless you're meeting in a tiny house. There's a great crowd of disciples and a great multitude of people. They came to hear Jesus and to be healed of their diseases. They came to listen to Jesus and they came to have their bodies healed. Our physical bodies are amazing, but we all have something physically that could use an overhaul or at the very least maybe a little adjustment. 
In addition to our aches and pains, we all struggle mentally from time to time and emotionally and spiritually. We all need help. Sometimes the right image or the right spoken word can resonate deep within us and change our focus or perception in life in life-giving ways. And sometimes we need more than inspiring words. Sometimes we need a physical touch. Sometimes we need physical healing. Perhaps in some ways we always need some form of healing. They came to hear Jesus and to have Jesus touch their lives in ways that brought inexplicable healing. We need to hear Jesus. We need Jesus to touch our lives in ways that brings inexplicable healing. Then Jesus looked at his disciples and said, Jesus is preaching to the choir. This sermon is directed to the disciples. Our relationship with Jesus is ongoing and never ending. We never cease from the need to hear from Jesus and to have Jesus touch our lives in ways that brings inexplicable healing. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you. It is the same phrase that we heard as the opening to Psalm 1. In fact, it has been pointed out that it is the dominant phrase throughout the Psalms, running through them like a cord that connects them all together. The translation that we heard from Psalm 1 used the word happy instead of blessed because we actually need multiple English words to capture what is being communicated. The image or the idea of being communicated is one of having a satisfying source that nurtures and sustains your life. Our reading from Jeremiah articulated it this way. Blessed, happy are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The image is one of thriving, like a tree planted by water, where there are more than sufficient resources for nurturing its life, no matter what comes against it. Jesus does something counterintuitive. He pairs this image of blessedness or of happiness with things that we would perceive as detrimental to a deep sense of our well-being and thriving. Jesus says, blessed or happy are you who are poor. We know that lack of resources, poverty, can cause health problems, relationship problems, emotional and spiritual problems. Blessed or happy are you who are hungry. Hunger does not put people in a great state. We've all seen those commercials where the person is not themselves, they're hangry. They need some food, some nourishment, probably a bit more than a chocolate bar. Blessed or happy are those who weep. Yes, we can weep tears of joy, but this reference is to tears of grief and despair. Blessed, happy are you when people hate you, exclude you, revile you, defame you. If you are the recipient of such personal attack, you're probably having difficulty sleeping or even successfully navigating daily activities. We do not associate being blessed or happy or possessing a deep sense of well-being with anything that Jesus proclaims here. What we are taught in life as we grow and move and engage in the world as essential to being blessed or happy or having a deep sense of well-being is to acquire sufficient resources so that we can be full and have our appetite satisfied and be free to have a good time and enjoy ourselves and to be well liked and admired and appreciated. But Jesus says, woe to all of that. Woe is a cry of grief. 
Jesus says if those things are the source that gives our life meaning and substance, we're going to end up in a state of grief. As Jeremiah puts it, that is trusting in mere mortals and making mere flesh our strength. Blessedness, happiness, comes from having a different source that gives our life meaning and substance. Blessed happiness comes from a close and trusting relationship with Jesus. As John proclaims him, the Word made flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, for whom all things came into being, for whom light came into being, and for whom is love. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. When the source of our life, the source of our blessedness, the source of our happiness, lies in the Word made flesh, Jesus, then no matter what condition we find ourselves in, the source of life nurtures us so that we can fulfill the hope and the dreams and the call for us as humans that is proclaimed throughout the Psalms, and we will be blessed. We will be filled with a life-giving hope that will find its expression in how we relate to other human beings. The Psalms proclaim to us, happy or blessed are they who consider the poor and needy. Our Lord considers the poor and needy. Happy and blessed are they that act with justice, that do righteousness at all times. Our Lord acts with justice and righteousness at all times. Happiness, blessedness, is not found in demanding a freedom that enables you to do as you please without regard for others. Happiness, blessedness, is keeping justice and doing righteousness at all times, which puts the needs of others, especially the least among us, about our needs. In fact, we never have to pursue happiness or blessedness. It is bestowed upon us. A river of life flowing from one who gave up their rights and freedoms to give us life. Jesus is inviting us to let go and to come to him. The source of living water, the source of healing, the source of life. May we be still receive from him the source of life. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, that you do come to us, that you never leave us or forsake us, and that indeed you give us life. May you fill us with the joy of knowing you. May we be blessed by you this day. Come, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen.
and confess our faith as we say we believe in one God the Father the Almighty maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ the only Son of God eternally begotten of the Father God from God light from light true God from true God begotten not made of one being with the Father for him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. This morning we start with a prayer for the unification of Northern and Southern Korea. Gracious God of the past, the present, and the future, who has sustained us through all our past struggles and suffering, who is with us at the present moment, with all its contradictions and uncertainties, and who will be with us in a future pregnant with hope and fulfillment. We bless you for past mercies, for the faithful witness that so many displayed during the struggle for democracy in South Korea, for the comfort you offered so many who endured pain and undeserved suffering for the sake of a better country. Let us pray a new future into being. To those who wield power, the wisdom to use it wisely. To those who would disrupt and divide us, arms to enfold us and unite us with love. To those who would wish us to be enemies, a refusal to be enemies. We bring our deepest needs and commitments into the presence of the one who makes all things new. We ask that you disturb our apathy and our indifference to peace and reconciliation. 
Fill us with a longing to do justice, seek mercy, and to walk humbly with you. We bring before you our commitment to create a new heaven and a new earth. We reaffirm the reality of the resurrection that brings life out of death, hope out of despair, love out of hatred, until all life is made new through you. Amen. Righteous God, we pray for your church. We, when we preach a gospel that does not challenge or unsettle, when pomp and possessions mask our dependence on you, when we stray from your path or lead others from your ways, disturb our minds and turn our hearts to you that we may be a community of faith which proclaims your reign of justice and peace. And this morning we pray for Linda, our primate, Lynn, our metropolitan, John, our bishop, and Alan, our rector. Righteous God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all in need, for your people who are lonely, neglected, frightened or sad, for the bereaved, the sick, and for all without hope. And this morning in this parish, we pray for Evelyn Scott, for Mary, for Ella, Debbie, Helen, Daniel, and any others that are on your hearts and minds this morning. When we leave the weak and the vulnerable to care for themselves, when we shut away the disabled and the elderly, when we fail to notice the needs of others or turn away from those in distress, disturb our minds and turn our hearts to you, that we may bring comfort and compassion and care for the needy. Righteous God, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. <clears throat> we pray for the departed, for all good and holy people, who have put their trust in you, for all who are delighted to follow your law. When we ignore the challenge of your teaching, disturb our minds and turn our hearts to you, that with Christ and all the saints, we may be raised to everlasting life and find our reward with you in heaven. Righteous and disturbing God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites us into his presence. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine, Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. serve our Lord. Thanks be to God.